It's that time of the month once again though. When first season 2024 got announced for Splatoon 3, I was expecting only nothing but new tables of cards to show up where we are gifted with new weapon cards and that's it. But nope! Instead, we get a slap in the face out of nowhere that Nintendo doesn't want you to see, and alongside the new weapon cards, we got cards from Side Order, Inkopolis Square characters, Inkopolis Square opponents to fight for their card sleeves, and most importantly, new maps to really love for the underrated tabletop community. RIP Spike Square Square stage, you will never be forgotten at all. With that aside, I'm here to only talk about how good these tabletop cards are, considering the fact that most of them are now fighting for the top spot of number one tabletop card of all time. I'm noting that I will make a tier list of the new maps I have my opinions on, so for that reason, they will be separate on its own video. For now, let's get started and make sure you hit that subscribe button for more content like this. Number 233, Order Duelies. This type of Splat Duelies is considered okay in terms of card synergy. Not much of a powerhouse altogether, but it makes up for it in really small card special farming in comparison to some other slasher cards. It's okay, but i just use it to pass the time if you have some available space paired with, well, any of the jellyfish shopkeepers like Jill or Fleur for example. B tier. Number 234, the 52 Gal Deco. Starting off with the nearly best shooter in the game is the 52 Gal Deco in card form. Unlike its vanilla counterpart, it seems like it's an almost better slosher card. Yet, it's very niche in terms of cornering in between spots like how slosher does, usually not farmable enough to eventually pair well with Squid Sisters or even Gootubers. 96 is your best bet if you want something longer and a bit similar. It's flat out D tier. Number 235, the Foil Flings of Roller. This Flings of Willer is so underrated, yet it doesn't lack much when placed in a wall. The alternate roller type of card easily doesn't get much attention, but manages to play alright because of its combo game. This easily can be a backup in case your opponent aggros your base combo, and not really attacking as much in the enemy side. Stick to the vanilla roller or crack on, and ditch its cousin and this once and for all, C tier. Number 236, New Squirfer. To be clear, if you're going for a charger that can ease well in most tight spots, go with this one. This can be a good card during mid-game all up in certain maps like the original, but pairing well with most other non mirror cards can spice up the competition all over again. It's pretty much a good meta card if you're trying to replace a card with a charger card of some sort, but overall pretty okay in niche. It could combo well like its vanilla cousin, so go with that alternative option if you will. B tier. Number 237, Custom E Leader 4K. Now this is a Charger Heavyweight done right! Like the 4K, it's your best bet towards pre-planning that spot to fit well with your best Sniper Heavyweight card like Marina or Big Man for example. Usually other than that, it's better enough to attack early but the kicker though, like most line cards, it sucks if that's your only card to start at phase combo since again, your opponent weaves around it. High risk. High rewarding nonetheless. A tier. Number 238, Custom E Leader 4K Scope. Stating that this card is just a mirrored E Leader Scope, it still goes totally well if you have its custom E Leader counterpart, and clearly, this makes this card one of the best ones to play and experiment around since they are good openers and can cheese through maps like Thunder Point. Experienced players may know that this 7 long wide card is in fact not so great in corners, but good in aggro plays. A tier. Number 239, Custom Explosher. The vanilla mirrored version of the original Explosher did make its comeback when Fresh Season 2024 was released, but does this still hold up to its hype? Not much, but thankfully it's not as risky as it can be, and it's a great card next to almost any opener in Cracker Step, and the downside is that it's hard to form its special block around it. And not even Little Judd can help out on this one. That eh, maybe it's already alright, but it deserves a B tier. Number 240. Dread Ringer D. This bad boy helps base combo in nearly any way possible. A great midline card for the greater good and possibly better in girder and X marks. It doesn't lead up to some notable combos, but regardless considered an okay card alone. C tier. Number 241, Nautilus 79. 
A great car to fit through curved spaces. It seems like, though, I don't really despise it, considering the fact that it's nearly as good as the original version. Either way, in the meta, it's pretty rare to eventually see this card in all, because it can fit well with maybe Eeldy or Fry, but nonetheless, it can serve as a risky substitute to a Splatana Wiper slash Stamper, combining with the wall combo Flutter. B tier. Number 242, Luga Dooley's Deco. Like the Nautilus and its mirrored cousin, it's once again rarer to have in the meta, but it's best to farm it through like a slushy machine, as long as you know where to place it around corner walls. Not so well better than a whole Boros combining with an Octohopper, but more base combo potential nonetheless. B tier. Number 243, Dalza Dooley's Double F. I have some positives and thinking that this new weapon can be good in the meta, and only one negative towards this. It could be base combo so well with Gluga, and a compatible heavyweight card that I can only possibly think of, but it has one downside. When you try clashing with this card, always make sure to have it be prepared in turn 3 to cheese through X marks, and possibly sticky kick it. As long as you can use this card to aggro plays, you'll be standing tall with this to the top. A tier. Number 244, Recycled Dweller 24, Mark 1. Out of all the diagonal cards, it seems a bit worse since, yes, it has synergy towards wall combining and defending, but this just makes you want to play any brush class in general. At least for the most part, it can however be a decent yet not as bad diagonal in Double Gemini. And in Cracker Snap, since it's the only few that can cheese through the center right next to Ink Brush and Triple Link Strike, it can do well as you thought, but it feels like you'll be losing a lot of matches if you play this wrong. C tier. Number 245, Flow. This is basically Killer Whale 5.1, but absolute near bad. While Flow is considerably one of the worst heavyweights, she at least makes up for it with her special block on the inside of the card. You can at least replace it with this with a Killer Whale special card, but the similarities between the two are still the same, and can be annoying to deal with in your deck. Good opener, but a hard one to deal with. C tier. Nova 246, Jelfonzo. Jelonzo and Jelofler, you have competition. This fella is the perfect fit for the trio of jellies since, come on, that's your only best card in a Thunder Point base combo deck that can also combine well with GooTuber, the Squid Sisters, and even Sloshers of all cards. Seems like it's also been rarely used in defense decks and such for naturally thinking outside the box. Some comp players tend to think this might be the jelly killer out of the trio, but if you want to swap this to any of the jellies all the way around, then I'd say go for it, as this deserves a spot in A tier. Number 247, Bisque. This spider crap shoe owner is considered the rarer card used in the meta, and noteworthy since day one. While he does have some of the most common combo with zinc and other diagonal cards, like splatter color screen and ink mine, it's pretty much a long way to go, well made, in base combo. But brushes can also be viable alongside this card. A deck fit for a spider crab can be a great fit for you to try out. B tier. Number 248, Oct. This card, albeit somewhat representing a skull head similar to how pirate flags look, is also a 16 space card right next to Captain. It isn't much better compared to Marina and all, but if you're wondering about why Marina can be better than Oct, well, we'll get to that later. But anyways, Oct having some similar shape to Marina's is pretty viable, and also okay to combo well with Octoling, and maybe DJ Octavio as well if you want to get serious that way. B tier. Number 249, Cypher. This card is by far mostly viable since it's one of the many cards that have the most card combos, or in other words, most synergy in between decks. This fits well as a base combo in Mask Mansion with Hero Shot, Friend Clubs, and even Ink Vac and Gohozuna. While it's a good heavyweight compared to Hype Manta Storm Big Man, it's kinda mean to even clash against it, or better yet, reach towards it. Amazingly great in the meta, but almost good enough to outsmart pretty much any card. A tier. Number 250, Pearl Drum. The Pearl Drone along with Order Duelies are tied for having a 6-2 in-game where originally Splatana for example is a 5 space card which costs 2 special points to play a special attack. Imagine that for the Order Duelies and the Pearl Drone itself. 
Well, these two are considerably a probably better upgrade as well, as we thought, but it costs three special points to play them. As for the card itself, it's a disruptor, but equally better, because this can combo off of Harmony and maybe in some Sticky Thicket decks. A Hype Manta Storm, Big Man, or even Cypher, of course. Very good small card, but a hard one to control with. Especially if you play it like it's a disruptor. A double-sided disruptor, if you will. Good small card, but a hard one to control with. A tier. Number 251, Pearl. Pearl herself is considered one of the two cards next to Marina to have the highest number of card space of all being 18 spaces total. In Cracker Snap, her special block placement actually gains an edge in the center for reasons, as she's pretty much your best base combo starter to combo off with, alongside Hyper Manta Storm, Big Man, and the Triple Link Strike. Although, all things considered though, that's only in Cracker Snap. She does play tough in the meta on certain maps, including Double Gemini, and would still be alright having one of the most combos to have combined with her. Well, I gotta give her a run for her rapping sensation, as she keeps the beat going in S tier, man! And number 252, Marina. Now jokes aside and all about her or the community saying Perlina all over Nintendo's ears, but I ain't looking for a fight, okay? Just don't mind me. And remember earlier when I said something about Marina being better than Oct? Well, this image shows why exactly. But all in all, I'd say both of them could definitely have a video of its own of who's uh, actually fighting who. But let's go on over and move on. While she is also another 18 spaced heavyweight, if you combine well enough with Pearl, the wall combo Pearlina combo is a very good heavyweight wall combo. But the downside is that when placed in a wall, it's hella risky to pull off. And the reason? Well, your opponent would always mess up your base combo if exposed on the other side. So either risk it all or just play it safe and play it another time. But I recommend playing this in your base combo. Yet, it's best if you make this as separate as you can be. But Oct is similar to Marina, like I said and mentioned earlier. But naturally, the Oct card can win some clashes against the Heavyweight, but defense-wise, not so much. It is mostly just well enough to have some card synergy, since it's possible to have more than three combos off of it. Better off using this card to mix up your opponent's path, and maybe good base combo if you will. S tier. And with that, that is it for Fresh Season 2024. Let's just hope that Seasonal Season 2024 actually does better, especially with two new weapons coming out in the meta. And at the time of recording this right now, I'm excited to say that I hope that we would finally get the best cards in the game that can dethrone Splatter Color Screen. But that's just another story for another time. And with that, thank you guys for watching so much. This is KaiKai3212, signing off.